Hello, everyone. I'm joined again by Pastor Salazar, lead pastor of Emmanuel Bible Church. We're so glad to be with you this uh, afternoon. Dr. Salazar, good afternoon. How are you? Very well, Pastor Tino. Thank you for inviting me again to be part of this podcast. And uh, I want to greet all our listeners. And again, thank you also for joining us. Magnificent. You know, um, we've been enjoying uh, this uh, trip through the beginning of Genesis, uh, these last uh, few uh, sermons that you've preached. And it's been a, a real blessing uh, also, Pastor, to have, uh, of as of late, uh, last few months, we've had um, the children and the young people stay with us where they used to go to Sunday school uh, before the service and all during the service. The children are staying in for worship and then returning and uh, um, I, I just it's just been a blessing to see all of the kids and uh, the young people in the auditorium during the worship time. And uh, so what are your thoughts on that? Just um, maybe something you and Rebecca as a value have with your children? Absolutely. For, for me, it's it's it produces genuine joy in my heart uh, where my children can be worshiping, learning, uh, having fellowship with the rest of the members of the family of the church. And so they're learning not to learn uh, to grow and worship in the way their the people from their own age knows how to do it, but also with other ages, other different people that are coming from different contexts. And so all together, this multi-ethnic family that is how God designed the church mm -hmm. uh together, worshiping together, which is a precious reality that in Christ we can enjoy. And it very much has been, most certainly. Well, Pastor, we've been talking about a lot of uh, a, a lot of things, a lot of themes in in Genesis, more than most folks maybe think of. Okay, well, you have the creation account, and you have the uh, uh, the fall of of uh, humanity via the sin of our first parents, and then we have Noah, and and kind of your your average Bible reader, your average uh, Emmanuel Bible uh, attender. Uh, have these milestones when they think about Genesis, but I've seen you really um, uh, squeeze out so many more themes that are in those first uh, few very important chapters of Genesis. And one of the things that that came up is is that God uh, has has uh, has made Himself available to us as our only source of hope. And so, uh, unpack that a little bit for us. Absolutely. For example, this is based on, on the, and I encourage our listeners to read chapter five, Genesis chapter five. Uh, in the last verses, we have the story about the Bible character called, his name is Lamech or Lamech. Mm -hmm. um, and he he is uh, one of the descendants of, of, um, of Seth. And he describes that he has this special, special faith. Uh, and so one of the things that we ask ourselves when we're studying uh, his behavior, his faith, his exclamations, is that he is, when he's thinking of his son, Noah, and he's mentioning there, he's thinking of the promises of God. And so in that chapter, Lame, Lame, Lamech's um, a hope is based in the promises of God. So what Moses, the author, is teaching us is that not only God himself, but the promises of blessings that he has already given to human beings. That is the source of our hope. So God himself, through his promises, is the one that presents himself as the, the only most secure, robust um, source of hope for any human being. Specifically in the promise that he will send uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, the seed of the woman, where the the hope of humanity lays. Um, and so, yes, God is our source of hope, not our situations. When we read that, we understand that our situations, our circumstances, the things that we're going through, we need to suffer them. We need to manage them. But with the hope set, not in the solution of each one of those circumstances but in the fact that god is empowering us helping us to suffer uh mean what we suffer he's sustaining us empowering us to go through that specific circumstance uh and that's why i describe god as as our only source of hope 
So true. What would you say to the uh, you, you, brother or sister that comes uh, on a Sunday to Emmanuel Bible, uh, to the building that houses the church and that uh, meets on Sunday, the church meets every Sunday there to worship corporately and hear God's word? Um, but we don't always know at church, for example, folks come in to church service and they have smiles mostly. Um, and but you know as well as I that that uh, folks are carrying some very heavy burdens. Yes. Uh, there are some there's some there's some very serious things going on, uh, especially in, in the United States, in our country with the economy, uh, uh, loss of jobs, uh, people are, are hurting financially. Um, and, um, moreover there's, uh, family issues. And what would you say to the, to the average person that, that is just holding on to so much burden? Um, what can they do practically to manage that? As you put it, I think I'll, I will say that to apply the principle that we mentioned our character Lamech, um, uh, practices. What are the, the promises that I have from God? And then allow those promises to influence my way of looking at my reality. Um, for example, in Christ, if we are a disciple of Christ, in Christ means if we have believing Christ as our Savior and Lord, if he, is that, that he has that position in our lives. So we have the security of uh, that God will fulfill his promises on us. Let me give you one, one of the most precious promises believers can face their realities with. Uh, it's in Matthew uh, chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my joke upon you and learn from me. For, my, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is comfortable and my burden is light. What the invitation, our hope lies in the fact that God is our Heavenly Father, that we can bring our reality, the, the different uh, products or, or things that are producing, that this suffering or circumstance is producing in us. We can come to the Lord uh, as daughter, as a, as a son of, of God, and bring our reality to him. In, me, in that exchange that we give him our reality, he says that he can give us a hope, a, a peace is the word that mentions. A peace that it will set in the heart, that it will allow us to continue with hope, persevering, facing the different circumstances that we're facing. Uh, we can supplicate, bring our reality, our anxieties, our problems, our needs, and cry them out loud to the Lord and mm. to submit each one of those needs to his will. And he is faithful and powerful to answer many of those needs. But for those that he will not answer, but keep us helping us persevering through those circumstances, we can have completely security that he will help us to go through them and persevering and going out of those trials in a way that our faith is going to be more robust and we're going to mature through uh, the circumstance in for his glory. Yeah, amazing. I've always appreciated that um, after every service, first hour, second hour, um, there generally speaking are some elders in front that uh, are willing to pray with folks. And so we want to make sure that... Um, uh, if you are carrying a heavy burden and you're, you're at service on Sunday, um, uh, seek us out and uh, we'd love to help um, carry that with you. It's very important. You know, Pastor, one of the most difficult things that we uh, look at is uh, when we think about the character of God and we, um, we have to um, um, look at that through the lens of the old covenant, the new covenant. We have a, a new administration under Christ Jesus. Uh, we have a new priesthood. We have a new uh, a new order, a new way of 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 looking at things. But in those first uh, chapters of of Genesis, uh, and you mentioned Lamech and his son Noah, and we know where Noah 
wound up uh, 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 obeying the Lord uh, by uh, doing something which uh, probably seemed quite quite impractical, building this giant boat in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I can't imagine the uh, the 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 uh, you know the, uh, the 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 ribbing he would have received and the uh, the jeers. Um, uh, but the Bible does tell us it, a curious uh, verse that tells us that uh, God was grieved that He had created mankind. What 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 is exactly that uh, that that sentiment? Because I think that can be misused if it's not properly explained. Absolutely, yeah. It's it's the first word that is described. Uh, I mean the the verse. The verse uh, is the verses before describe the wickedness of, mm. of of human beings in that time. The ones that the God was observing and reading their hearts, it describes uh, a very dark situation happening in their hearts. It talks about the intentions of the heart. All of them, at all times, were evil. So it describes a something really corrupted, affected by sin, meaning mm. that everything that they did uh, was completely independent, independent of God. Uh, they were like semi-gods declaring their will without taking into account God's revealed truth. And, and so that is described as grieved. The, the, the word, um, exp um, what it means, some, some translations have used the word repented, regretted. Mm -hmm. um, and it's understandable. That's one of the meanings of the word. But I think behind repented, behind regretted, we need to recognize a sense of grief. Um, why grief? Let's talk in terms of a burden. Uh, is the same word that is used when Lamech is describing uh, the burden that the curse had over over mm. the toil uh, that they needed to suffer when they were working the ground. Um, mm. it, and so that burden is, is now used, the same term used in here. God was burdened, grieved, saddened when he saw that condition of or the state of the human heart. Um, and so that allows me to think that even if God judges sin, and passes judgment and consequences over sin, that doesn't mean he does it like uh, in the terms of like many human beings, we react to other people's sin and is getting angry, sure. you know? Um, so when we talk about the uh, God's anger or wrath, mm -hmm. uh, we need to see it in terms of grief, mm -hmm. of grief over what is has happened with his image. That now the Im his image inscribing human beings is used to reflect pure sin and evil. So that brought uh, grief into his heart. And so that is the main idea in there, which allows us to understand that there is a, a, a God, our God is someone that we can relate to because we can understand grief. Mm -hmm. um, and so grief, if that's what he feels when we sin against him, grief is not stopping us from coming to him it's it's a description that gives hope even if we're sinning against him gives hope because we know we can come to a grieving father to a grieving god that has sent his son to that in the cross for the forgiveness of our sins that will never reject no one nobody under no circumstance he will reject someone that comes to him repentant confessing their sin mm. you know he, he will forgive I mean, understanding his grief can also invite us to repentance, to confession, to come into him and ask him forgiveness. And the grieving father will forgive us and reestablish that relationship. If you, if you are in Christ, that forgiveness is already granted through the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And communion can be reestablished when we come and repent in front of him, knowing that we're saved already but when we have not acknowledged christ as our lord and savior so we come we need to come to here 
uh, knowing that his grief is his main reaction towards our sin and that we are under his judgment, confessing, acknowledging our state of sin, repenting from it, confessing it to him, asking him to save us through the precious blood of Christ, mm. through the gift given in the cross that was accomplished through Christ, and that the benefits of that sacrifice may be applied into our lives. Salvation, forgiveness, redemption, a freedom from sin, uh, reestablished in a relationship with him, adopted, uh, sanctified, um, the many benefits that we receive in a personal relationship with God through Christ. Mm, absolutely. I love that picture of uh, it, it being grieving. And uh, of course, uh, anybody that's a parent, especially we dads uh, who have children, and when those children are, are, are struggling, uh, that can be a very, very painful experience as a parent to watch. Um, and uh, if, if for us, more so God, um, we also have the picture of the prodigal son, how the, the father was scanning the horizon, waiting for that boy to come to his senses. And, uh, and so he was ready to receive the son once the son came to himself, the Bible says. He came to himself. He, came, he realized he was in the, in the middle of the pigsty, and he said, okay, I got to stop this. Yeah. That's wonderful. Amen. Well, you know, you mentioned um, in your last answer this um, um, a separation between people who uh, are believers and people who are not believers. Uh, essentially, I think the Bible does tell us that the world is separated into two groups. Those are uh, the groups, the, the folks that have placed their faith and trust in Jesus, and those who have not. And so we have uh, um, 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 a, a separation. There's a, uh, there's a wall between uh, the two groups. Now, there's much to be said about that. Um, but in essence, um, I know that uh, as, as we all start on the side of being not believers from the time we're born until we come to um, of some somebody shares the good news with us. But um, tell us a little bit about uh, the need for those who are not yet believers to be rescued. And so what, what does that exactly mean? Rescued exactly from, from what? It's a very important question. I think it is a life or death question, literally. Mm -hmm. um, God is faithful to his word. Mm -hmm. Just when he promised a blessing, but also when he promised a consequence uh, because of our sin. And so the Bible it speaks about God promising death as the result of sin. The consequence of sin is death, spiritual death, physical death. Um, and, and that is what we see in this world functioning, a world that lives under the judgment of God, living affected by death, affected by sin. And so the Bible also is, is, is uh, the story of hope, of, of how God restored the blessing that originally he wanted to give uh, human beings to be in a relationship with him. But sin would not allow us to be in a relationship with him. So he sent a rescuer. Hmm. He, sent, he promised a rescuer. So he sent a rescuer hmm. to rescue us from our sins, from the penalty of sin, from the consequence of sin, death, and from the power that sin had over us. Uh, and so the rescuer was sacrificed in the cross for paying for our sins, mm -hmm. each one of them, and for making us free from the power, not only of death, but also the power the sin had upon us. Mm -hmm. And so that's how the promise of rescue is given, not only because we are giving through faith eternal life, but also freedom from the power of sin. So we as human beings, we can change. We can live now for the original design that God has for us to live for his glory, to worship him, to reflect him, to know him, to make him known. Uh, and now in Christ, we can do that. But without Christ, you cannot. So you mm -hmm. live under the wrath of God, 
under the penalty of that judgment. And so my fellow he hearer and friend, um, if you have not embraced Christ as your savior, mm -hmm. today I invite you to believe, uh, plus your faith in the work that Christ did in the cross on your behalf and your sins uh, will be forgiven. And also God is faithful to make you um, to make you his child, his son or daughter through your faith in the person of Christ, in the work of Christ in the in the cross. He's faithful to answer that that confession of repentance and of faith. And he will send the Holy Spirit to live in your life. And from then on, you live as a free human being for his mm -hmm. glory. Excellent. Excellent. We want to invite anybody that hasn't received Christ or needs more information, please go to our website. Uh, here's our web address. And uh, at the very top, there's a button that says the gospel, the good news, with uh, some good information, some helpful next steps and what we can expect uh, when we do place our faith and trust in Jesus. And uh, uh, also uh, the address of the building where the church meets every Sunday. Uh, you can find it there. And um uh, also, an opportunity exists on our website for you to be part of our mailing mail address or our email address, um, uh, mailing list, that is to say, with your email. You can give us your email and we'd be happy to let you know about more things going on at Emmanuel Bible Church. Well, Pastor, we've talked about the, um, the grieving of God. And um, uh, when someone does become a believer, uh, and they are on the road to sanctification. There's this process that God uses, uses all of our circumstances and the suffering around us and our own personalities, perfectly tailored programs he puts together for us to become more and more like Christ. And um, during that process, we continue to sin as people. Uh, mm -hmm. We do have, we, we continue to make mistakes. We continue to outright sin. Uh, disregard and as you've been putting it become independent of God and and go off on our own to try to um, um, try to make our own way and and be the arbiters of good and and evil um, which doesn't work right it never works um, what would you say about um, our ability still to grieve the Holy Spirit and so uh, we of course believe in the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit um, um, Maybe let's close with that thought, and then and then we can pray for the listener, and and uh, we can move forward. I want to respect your time today, sir. Thank you. Yes. Um. To answer your first question, um, uh, the scriptures um describes or declares the promise of God. The ones we put our faith in the person of Christ, God Himself. Die and in his work, dying in the cross in our behalf. When we believe that he was raised um, in the third day uh, and that when we put our faith in the person and in the work, we are raised, we are crucified with him and raised with him. Meaning that now we have all the blessings that he gained for us. New life uh, and, 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 a type of, uh, and the forgiveness of our sins. The forgiveness of our sins first and now a new type of life that we can enjoy um when that happens uh, our relationship with god lays secure under the powerful hand of god the the what he what he achieved in the cross lays secure uh for the believer now what happens when we sin when our sin now believers it won't affect our salvation because now that lays secure in Christ, in the work that he accomplished in the cross, in the new life that he has provided through his resurrection. So what happens when we sin? We affect our communion with him, our relationship with him. But our relationship in the terms of fellowship is affected. That's when we grieve the Holy Spirit. Mm. And so how is it that we reestablish a, that relationship by repenting, confessing, coming to him and asking him to forgive us. Now, we have been forgiven. Yes, in terms of salvation, not in terms of relationship or communion. Mm. So 
when we believers come and confess our sins to him and ask him to forgive us, he immediately is faithful to forgive us and reestablish the communion. Now, what happens is that sin has consequences. Even if God reestablishes his communion with us, the communion is, is, um, is, is healed in, in a way of, of saying it, um, still we need to face the consequences of our sins. Mm -hmm. it probably has consequences that affected other people around us or consequences because it affects our own hearts. Um, and so we need to face those consequences, but the, the communion is restored because he's faithful to forgive and to restore what it was affected. Mm, amazing. Well, Pastor, we've come to the end of our time. I thought it would be um, profitable for uh, perhaps you pray for the listener and pray for us and, uh, and we can um, um, look forward to good days that the Lord has for us at Emmanuel Bible Church. Of course, please let's let's pray together. Uh, thank you, Father, for this opportunity that you're giving us to be reaching out to our community, to our listeners, using the different truths that you have left, Lord, revealed in your word. Today we have talked about hope in the midst of our circumstances. We have uh, we have talked about uh, the consequences of sin and 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 your your judgment over sin but at the same time father uh, the precious work that you accomplish through Christ for to rescue us Lord, and and the promise of redemption and salvation Lord that you have given through Christ that can be received through faith father and last Lord we have we have mentioned also Lord your heart, we mentioned about your heart, your the grief that you suffer, Father, when we sin against you, when we are living under the uh, by the practice of sin, or without repentance, without giving our lives to you, um, through the precious sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, and you grieve. So now, knowing these three ideas, Lord, we come to you, thanking you, Lord, because we have hope in you. If our listeners, Lord, are, 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 if there's somebody, someone in there listening to us that have not embraced the gift of salvation that you are in this position to give, uh, using the faith of our listener in the work of your son in the cross, Father, please convince him, move him or her, Lord, to embrace the gift of salvation in Christ, that you are offering an offer in Christ. Father, if our listener, is a believer in Christ, uh, but also maybe is walking in, in sin or has done something that he understands or she understands, Lord, has grieved your heart. Please invite her, invite him to come to you, Lord, with all security uh, of forgiveness, uh, knowing that you're faithful to forgive. And to believe after doing that, that you're faithful, Lord, to reestablish that fellowship and communion and to help them, Lord, to now stand up in fight against their own sin for your glory. And this is my prayer, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Pastor. We'll see you next time. Uh, to our listener, uh, please remember, go to our website for more information, especially about uh, the gospel. And uh, you can also find our address there for the building where the church meets Every Sunday, 10 a.m., we have our English service at 12 noon, our Spanish service, and uh, we look forward to seeing you. God bless you and keep you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.